Good morning, everybody. Hello, and welcome from IntelliCorp. Um, welcome to our Smart Impact Analysis for Fury and BSP Applications uh, webinar. My name is Emma Dowie, Marketing Manager at IntelliCorp, and with me on the call today is Michael Hugan, our Senior Application Engineer. Um, so before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping points. All the lines are muted um, to avoid any background distraction. If you have any questions, then just submit them in the chat box to me, um, and we'll try and get through as many as we can at the end. The call's um, 30 minutes today, so um, if we don't get to your question, then we'll be sure to follow up via email afterwards. Um, we're going to run a short poll, so I'm going to open that now. Um, that should pop up in your, in your WebEx panel. If you get a chance to answer those questions, that'd be great, and then at the end of the session, I'll go through the answers. Um, and we're also going to be recording the session. So um, we'll send out the slides and the recording afterwards. So Michael, I'll hand it over to you now. Hi, thank you. So um, welcome to the um, to the webinar. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about Life Compare in general. Um, life Compare is a very comprehensive tool uh, that supports many life cycle events. Um, so on this on this slide, you see all the different um, areas that we have um, analysis for. We can do audits with our audit template. Uh, we support any kind of impact analysis against customer leases, support packs, enhancement packs, uh, figuring out what to test based on that. And that's what we're we'll going to demo today regarding BSPs and uh, Fiori apps. Uh, we also support uh, any kind of data analysis, data comparisons, IMG configuration comparison, any kind of um, master data um, comparison, objects comparisons, synchronization uh, of, of systems. So many, many different uh, templates available. Next slide. So a um, couple of key points. Uh, Live Compare is a software um, that installs with, within a day, out of the box. Um, it's not, there's no consulting required. Uh, every analysis that we do is, is real time against the SAP systems. Uh, we require just a small um, set of transports uh, to go into each of your SAP systems. We kind of uh, like to think of Live Compare as a uh, Fitbit um, for your SAP system, um, like the Fitbit is monitoring your health. We are Live Compare monitors the health of your SAP system. Um, one of the biggest um, um, time saver here um, is um, reducing the test testing effort with our impact analysis. We reduce the effort up to you know 85 um, percent, making sure that you know what what to test and why exactly, and uh, making sure that you have zero production uh, defects. So just to talk about Fiori, what is Fiori? Fiori is basically based on NetWeaver, enables any kind of SAP application to be used on mobile devices. Um, the components in the back end really our uh, business server pages, BSP, and um, then in the front end um, on the Fiori dashboard that will be new JavaScript uh, on that basically makes up the Fiori uh, application, which we call, uh, basically we just call that web application or app. app. Okay. So Life Compare supports pretty much any kind of change, uh, um, lifecycle event for, for, those, for those apps. Again, a customer release, can impact um, your web applications, uh, uh, support pack upgrade, um, can affect those objects in the back end. So what we're going to show today is a smart impact analysis on Fiori apps and BSPs, and also a comparison of BSP. So just to give you some numbers here, we have um, consolidated 15 um, customer, uh, customers or uh, numbers from 15 customers. Um, so this is uh, just the usage, um, in, uh, in an average of uh, about 2,000 standard um, T codes and uh, or executables to, um, that they were used in production, uh, about 1,200 custom ones. So when we run the impact analysis, the next, the first deliverable is what what is actually impacted out of what's used. So when we have a major upgrade. Uh, the impact is typically uh, pretty high and brings down um, the the testing scope a little bit, um, about 30% down. 
Uh, so we, we have a smaller number to test, but that's still too much. Uh, you don't want to test everything that's used. You don't want to test everything that's impacted higher. You, you want to test everything that's most at the risk and really reduce the testing scope um, to the you know, to the minimum that you need to test uh, without leaving anything behind. We're making sure with this analysis that you are testing every object that's coming in at least once, making sure that you are testing those executables that are closest to the change. We actually going 10 levels deep uh, with, with that impact analysis and creating this uh, optimum uh, testing scope. So the most at risk, that's what we want to test. So you're testing smarter, not harder. Okay. Next slide. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to my demo. Let me just uh, share my desktop here. All right. Um, that's, so I want to show you, first off, the um, POE BSP Smart Impact Analysis app. So let's compare. Again, it's, it sits on a web server. It's, um, it has an app front end as well. So very simple to use. Uh, live compare can be used on any kind of mobile device as well, um, as long as you know, you can reach live compare server uh, in your network. So the theory app here that we created for you um, has a variant that is set up. Uh, so this is a, a major support pack upgrade on a CRM system. Um, so we really only require a couple of inputs. We need that list of transports on that CRM system that's to be upgraded. Um, the system does actually not have to be upgraded at that time. Uh, it is enough um, to just download those support pack transports and disassemble them. And we can actually have another app that does the disassemble for you. Um, so you just have to download them and mass disassemble. Um, so that's one input. Um, I have a list of 647 transports that are cut, cut and pasted in here from a spreadsheet. The next input is actually that system where those transports reside. Um, so that's that CS7 system. And in Telecom, we don't really have a production system. Um, so we, um, System 3 would typically be production. Um, what we pull from the production system are all the T codes and programs that are executed. Well, for the, for the Fiori apps, we're really interested in, uh, in the web application um, uh, history. So actually, with this new release, we're supporting that and we're pulling the history of those uh, Fiori apps. So that's being pulled in the background. And then I ran the analysis in advance for you. The analysis runs about an hour and a half, two hours, depending on you know, the size of the upgrade, but it's a normal number. So you actually could have this installed within a day, uh, like compared installs very easily. The actual web server installs within an hour, and then you just have to import the transports. You can literally install it in a couple of hours, and you have the um, the analysis done at the end of the day. So here are the results. Um, we create dashboards, and then we have the supporting um, Excel spreadsheets for that. So th these numbers are a little smaller here. Um, in our systems, we had 67 uh, standard executables uh, for custom. Um, out of those um, standard ones, we had uh, 52 that were impacted standard and three custom, and then the most at risk came down to 13 and 2. Um, let's look at the actual most at risk. Again, we're bringing the number down from usage to impacted, and then to really narrow it down to um, the most at risk and the minimum um, testing scope um, that needs to be executed. Uh, the supporting document here, the, the Excel spreadsheet, I have that open here, where I really narrowed it down um, to the web applications only. Um, so if you're using Live Compare already, you're familiar with how we, uh, how what this looks like with pro programs and T codes. Well, this new object type is called Wapper for Web Application. So, so the name here refers to the Fiori app for the um, BSP. Um, the next two columns are the screens that are affected and that should be tested. Okay, so we actually have for this for this Wapper here web application, we have quite a few. Uh, HTML pages and other pages that need, need to be te uh, tested. The depth I referred to um, 
uh, we, again, we, we're going 10 levels deep, meaning that we're starting with the highest level one and the closest, and then expanding all the executables <coughs> uh, 10 levels deep. The objects that are actually affecting this app are the transporter objects. So we have here three columns, the transport itself, and then we have the objects that are coming in from SAP. Excuse me. So typically for a um, web application, uh, those are the classes, and then the classes are using some of these sub-objects as well. Um, so this is basically the most at risk um, deliverable. Um, so all these are in here. Um, this is a, the lowest level detail here with all the, the different extra, with all the different objects. Okay. You just got to go back to the actual output. So when we, so we have now identified what is most at risk, what needs to be tested. Um, so if you are using HPLM, if you, um, you have that installed and using um, testing tools, we have a tight integration with HPLM. We basically take um, either the name of the WAPR, in this example, I actually use the screen, number, the screen names. Um, we actually hook into HPLM, um, search all your test cases for, um, for the occurrence of, of that token. So that can be either the name of the app or the screen. Um, and we have the creating a gap analysis. So for my 15 executables, I, <clears throat> I have a gap analysis here. I found four hits. I had 11 gaps. So for the, for the hits, this is what it would typically look like. We give you the test plan ID in HPLM, or the name of the test plan, the type, or the path, depending on how it's set up, you know, the, the path, and then the token that we scan for. So I, I scan for the screens here. Um, in, you probably, if you have it already for T codes and programs, uh, that will be the T code in there. Um, so it's up to you what token to use. So I have, we, we've, we basically list them here as hits, so that's a good thing. We found test cases for you. Um, and then we also have the gaps, basically for those web apps where we didn't find any occurrences for the tokens we scanned for. The gaps obviously um, give you a good idea that you uh, need to you know, put more work into HPLM and create more test cases so with the next go around that you have actually better coverage for your test automation. Um, what we also do when we are, after we identify the hits, we actually turn around and read these hits, and we actually uh, create the test the test plan, the um, test lab for you. So we actually have another workflow that again turns around, creates a test lab with those test cases for you. So it's a big time saver to create that. So next thing I want to show you are the is a comparison of a BSP app. So I had another app that I created that compares the web application objects. Um, very simple to use. <clears throat> we can create new variants. Here I have one uh, for a, a range of BSP apps, BP underscore, and then I have one here for um, for a, for like a single one. So I just put that in here. WFD map WAPO equals WFD map, and then. Just point that to system one and system two. Now, when you compare, well, at that point, you want to upgrade at least one system so you can actually look at the differences. Um, so here I have an as is system and a to be system, and I compare that um, that app for you. The result set, the resu result link here will display this for us. We have the object results. So the BSP app was found to be different. And I can expand here the BSP application and look at the differences in this HTML report. Um, so I'll just click through some of them here under controller. Um, there was an attribute that was found only in system one. So that's you know that the as is system. So in the system two that was not found, this Google map dot do uh, wasn't found in one of the systems. Um, also, we drill down further, there's an HTML page. Uh, with some code differences, so this um, displays that that code difference. Here we have five inserts in one system. On uh, the way you can, you don't have to scroll much. You can actually click on next difference. I mean, basically find those differences. There was code in system two that's not in system one. 
and then you can basically click through those differences. Okay. So that's how you compare a BSP app. Okay. That's pretty much the, the demo um, as far as um, the impact analysis and comparison. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to give this back to Emma. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Share my screen again. And then, Michael, I don't know if you wanted to go through the key points. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just uh, with this solution you can basically start creating the theory apps uh, and analyze the impact uh, you know, through customer leases, a support pack, um, um, uh, upgrades. So typically we find these, um, these theory apps in CIM and HANA um, systems. Um, we have some customers um, that also uh, have uh, already have theory apps on ECC, um, not on HANA, so that's um, possible as well. So uh, go ahead uh, with questions, uh, Emma. Yeah, so one of the questions that we had come in actually was um, if you could just go over again, um, how do you analyze the most at risk? I don't know if you wanted to share your screen at all again or just explain. Um, yeah, I'm just going to explain. I mean, the most at risk are, is there's an algorithm basically um, that we use. Um, so one of the, um, I mean, we pull the performance history data and we basically we expand that data 10 levels deep. Um, so we know all the objects that you have been executing. Um, we also know the transport objects that are coming in. And we find them in this technical bomb in this tree of links. And we pick basically, and then also uh, you have the ability also to include what you consider bi uh, uh, business critical objects or executables, which you can include up front. Uh, and then what goes really into that is business criticality. Uh, we take into account um, how, how um, close that change was. So if it's level one, it's more, most at risk. To level 10, it's less at risk. And then also the volume of the executable that comes from the performance history data. So if it's high execution, that's more important to test than low execution. Okay, so just off the back of that, Michael, a question that came in was, if, do I have to build um, a T-bomb? You don't. So what we do um, in advance of the impact analysis, we run a workflow that we call create object link cache. It basically, again, it collects the history data and, uh, and does this expansion 10 levels deep so you don't have to build this yourself. Uh, we create that once, you keep it fresh, maybe once a week or once a month, depending on how many changes you have, um, and that is being reused um, every time you run an impact analysis. Okay, a couple more that have come through. Um, can you shed some light on how to capture the production usage for BSP applications? Yeah, so the, there's, there's really, um, you don't really have to do anything in, in, in your production system. Typically, you, uh, you keep three months by default. Now, live compare, once you install it and set it up, uh, you basically schedule um, that, uh, that RFC destination to pull that once a month and collect it. Uh, typically, we, we, we collect 13 months, or most of our customers uh, collect 13 months, so we have a full year of his, history available. You can collect more if you like. Okay. A similar one as well, Michael, is do you need UPL data to support the impact analysis? Uh, not for BSP theory um, or, or more traditional ABAP applications. We, we do collect it, and we have the ability to collect it for you, and also um, we, we use it for uh, specific um, impact analysis on um, extended warehouse management, EWN. But the, you know, out of the box, the, the, the um, smart impact analysis does not need it. Okay, thanks, Michael. Another one, do you need SAP HANA to run Fiori app? Um, well, we, we don't think so. We have customers that are using Fiori for, um, for mobile app development um, and integrate with ECC6 uh, on, more, on a more traditional um, database. So we don't think you need HANA. I think you probably have to be on a certain support bag level, though. Right, okay, thanks, Michael. And how much effort is required to get up and running with your software? 
Yeah, about you know maximum a day really. Um, the 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 um, live compare server installs within within an hour, and then it really depends on how fast you can be can get the the uh, our transports approved to go into your systems. Um, our transports are uh, in namespace, so there's really no collision with any of your custom custom uh, objects. I have had a question come in. Um, what's the difference between business impact awareness application and BSP application? Um, we just need a little bit more clarification on that one. So if you could just um, write a little bit further, we'll take a look. Um, another not, question. Not, not, okay, I don't understand the question really. BSP application and in, impact, impact awareness application. Yes, yeah, so if the if the sender could. Just um, write a little bit more detail about what they're looking for, then we'll try and answer that. No, I, need, I need to take that one offline. I'm not sure that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, one question as well is, uh, is Live Compare certified by SAP? Yes, yeah. Uh, Live Compare is an ABAP add on, um, so all, all our components are in that space and it's certified, yes. Okay. And another one I had come in was about um, support for HP Quality Center and the integration there. And which version um, do you have? Do you support? We, we support versions um, 11, 11.5, and 12 at the moment. Okay. Another question I had come in was around custom code and asking, does Live Compare work with custom code? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's a you know out of box feature. Fully supports custom code. Um, so there's many many different things you can do. Again, the impact analysis. Obviously, um, if you if you have your custom releases, you know we, we do the same thing for your custom code and find out what needs to be tested. There are other things you can do uh, with Live Compare. First of all, you know identify all the unused custom codes. So if you have a major upgrade and you have a lot of un unused custom code in your SAP system, in your production system, obviously you don't want to use that or you don't want to maintain that uh, and retire it. So we, we have analysis for that. You can also simulate uh, simulate a change impact analysis for an object that you intend to change. Um, so we don't actually have to create a transport to analyze a custom object that you intend to change. Um, we have the ability to also do a code analysis as far as um, quality of your code. We scan every line of code for um, any kind of performance improvement. Uh, if you're going to HANA, we actually um, we actually have the ability to scan all the code and identify any kind of problems that might might arise, and any kind of uh, SQL calls, any kind of database calls, uh, any kind of commands that may not work on HANA anymore. Um, also, look at all the select statements if they're um, proper for for HANA. Um, we also have uh, templates that you can use to eliminate a duplicate custom code, anything that was copied from production, find find those those kind of clones. Um, so there's a lot of there are a lot of things we can do, yes. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Michael. Um, one question we had come in, does this tool support tracking the testing of the impacted object? On tracking the testing, well, I mean we we, we don't I mean we don't run the tests, so everything that you, you're doing is basically in your testing tool. Uh, I mean we don't we don't actually trigger the tests, you're executing them in HPLM. So, you know, that's happening pretty much there. Can I, can I add a comment to that one, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I know we've seen some customers do is when, when people go off and perform testing of these applications in their QA systems, they then use Live Compare to look at the usage data of the QA system. And that's used as a way to sort of cross-reference that, oh, someone says they ran a test, you know, therefore I should see that that object was run in my QA system in our QA time period. So that's one of the things I've seen some customers do. For, so it's not really tracking, it's more of a validating that somebody did indeed go run that, that object that's supposed to be tested. Yes, oh, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Right. Okay, so I'm going to leave the questions there. Any other questions that come through, then we'll get back to you via email. I'm just going to go through the poll now. Um, so these are some questions that I asked um, in a short poll at the beginning of the WebEx. Um, so if you were on the WebEx then, um, you will have got those. Have you deployed a Fury app? Um, so around about half of our audience were a no, only 20% yes, some in development. 
What are your plans for FAP HANON? 30% um, researching, uh, a number of exploring and implementing, um, and a pretty a small amount already in production. Um, how frequently do you update your CRM system? Um, so the majority here was monthly, quarterly, uh, and yearly. Uh, the no nobody was doing it weekly. <laughs> And um, what are your top three priorities for 2016 and 2017? So the majority there was production support, development, and testing. Um, so testing seems to be one of the biggest priorities that we find with most of the people we speak to. Um, and we've been through our questions. Um, so thank you very much, Michael, um, for your support today. Thanks as well, Chris. Chris Schumann, our CTO, joined us there. Um, if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to ask, I'll leave open the chat panel for the next few minutes or contact us via email. You can also connect with us on the main social media uh, platforms as well. So thanks very much for your time today. Thank you.